This is a stimulus update and daily news report. Got some big updates to share with you. Some Democrats are now thanking Joe Manchin for the situation we're in now, basically saying inflation is bad, but it could have been worse if it wasn't for Joe Manchin. Meanwhile, other Democrats are blaming the Republicans for not passing the Build Back Better plan. I'll give you those perspectives and video clips, plus the Republican perspective. And President Biden writes a letter to the top seven oil companies, basically saying you're making too much money, and some are saying that that money should be shared with the American people. With inflation on the rise, the big question is, are we going to get another inflation stimulus check? And when it comes to EBT emergency program, there are seven states that are giving it out and extending that program. And I'll give you some other important updates as well. Hope you're having a terrific Thursday. If you appreciate the fact-based, fast-paced updates, hit the like button down below and I'm giving $200 to my subscribers. I'll talk more about that later on in the video. But first, Fed hikes its benchmark interest rate to 0.75 percentage point, the biggest increase since 1994. So we kind of knew it was coming. And yeah, this is big. Uh, this might cool down the housing market, might cool down the economy. It might th make things more expensive. Uh, we'll see how this is going to go. But the stock market and crypto market is basically crashing because of all this news and the economy in general. But when it comes to the inflation and what's going on with that, MSNBC host, ex-Obama advisor, praises Joe Manchin for killing Biden's Build Back Better plan. So Steve Ratner told Joe Scarborough, in an ironic way, you almost have to thank Joe Manchin. So uh, these are Democrats thanking Joe Manchin when just a while ago, everybody was hating on Joe Manchin. Uh, take a look at this video clip right here. My God, I just wonder what would have happened if progressives had gotten their $6 trillion wish earlier this year. Yeah, in, a, in an ironic way, you almost have to thank Joe Manchin for blocking that because six and a half trillion dollars of spending in this economy would make these numbers look small. Yeah, look, we had yeah. a we had a huge budget deficit. We had an unbelievably aggressive reaction by the Fed to the pandemic. You can kind of understand why they were trying, but they just tried too hard. And now we're all going to pay the consequences in a very, very tough environment over the next year or two while this gets sorted out. And by the way, I wouldn't even say ironically thank Joe Manchin. You can just thank Joe Manchin uh, if you're glad that interest rates aren't even higher. <laughs> All right, Steve Ratner, thank you very much. We appreciate your coming on this morning. So where do you stand with Joe Manchin? Are you thanking him? Do you like him, not like him? Did he do the right thing? Let me know your thoughts on that. Meanwhile, DNC advisor claims Republicans responsible for inflation because opposition to build back better. So what's going on here is senior advisor uh, said that Republicans are to blame for inflation because they voted against President Biden's Build Back Better Act, a plan that was originally intended to cost around $5 trillion, uh, saying that uh, if Biden administration bore any responsibility for rising costs in the United States, Tapper added economists predicted Biden's massive spending agenda could inject too much money into the economy, thus exacerbating inflation. So this is the other perspective, basically saying that the Republicans, it's the Republicans fault why the Build Back Better plan didn't fail, which is why there is inflation. So it's so hard to know the truth of what's going on here. Uh, what Another thing he said here is all of the economists said if we pass the last portion of it, it would lower those costs. And so what you would have is Republicans purposely obstructing it and keeping it from happening, then at the same time saying inflation is high. So I don't know what to believe because both the Democrat and per, uh, Republican perspective for and against Build Back Better, some are saying it would have stopped inflation, some are saying it caused inflation. Uh, regardless, with all the inflation, stimulus check update is more relief on the way to curb inflation. So regardless of who caused inflation, we have inflation, it's getting worse, what is being done about it? So there are a few provisions, a few bills in the Congress, but at this point, Congress is moving way too slow to give out any type of inflation relief checks or stimulus checks to the American people. There's a lot of talk about it, but as usual, Congress slow walking everything, and it seems like almost nothing is getting done. So is more relief on the way? I think as we get closer to the midterm elections, we're probably going to see some more proposals and checks of some sort 
right before the midterm elections because Democrats desperately need votes at this point. And stimulus update, will my state receive summer pandemic emergency nutrition benefits? So there are seven states that are doing so. Uh, so only seven states have been approved to operate pandemic EBT program this summer. Those states are Alabama, Colorado, Indiana, Michigan, North Carolina, Vermont, Wisconsin. So extra money for food going out to those states. And then Biden urges... Biden urges oil companies to boost supply, slams high profit margins as not acceptable in new letter. Could this be the path to get new stimulus checks or gas relief checks? Uh, take a look at this video clip right here, and I'll talk more about that. President Biden accusing the oil industry of profiting from the record high gas prices. That from an open letter to seven of the biggest oil companies, including ExxonMobil, Chevron, BP America, and Shell. The president wrote that historically high refinery profit margins being passed directly on to the American families are not acceptable. Mr. Biden added that companies must take immediate actions to increase the supply of gas, diesel, and other refined product. If not, the president warned, he is considering invoking emergency powers to boost America's oil supply. This comes as we're all feeling the pain at the pump. AAA reports the national average gas price is about five bucks a gallon. 50 cents more than last month, nearly two bucks more than last year. CBC's Kayla Tausche live at the White House. Kayla, first he put it on Putin. Now he's blaming both Putin and big oil. Well, Shep, President Biden is now asking major oil companies to explain why they haven't returned to pre-pandemic levels of refining and enjoying those higher margins in the process. ExxonMobil, for one, responded to the White House saying, we've been investing through the downturn to increase refining capacity even during the pandemic when we lost more than $20 billion and had to borrow more than $30 billion. Overall, in the United States, oil refiners are operating at about 94% capacity, though the amount of oil they're capable of refining has fallen by about 1 million barrels of oil per day since the pandemic peak. Today, the press secretary said companies should increase gas supply at all costs for the good of American okay. consumers. Uh we see that as an important first step uh, in making sure that the oil refineries are doing their, their part, again, patriotic duty, in making sure that they're putting out capacity and they're not uh, taking advantage of a, uh, of, of a war uh, that is hurting the American public. Industry executives, I'm told, have privately provided some of their own tactical suggestions, like the White House investing alongside companies to reopen shuttered refineries, pairing refining regulations, supporting an existing oil pipeline from Canada called Line 5, and removing steel tariffs that have made drilling equipment more expensive. But other political options would seemingly clash less with the president's base, like Senator Ron Wyden. He made a proposal to tax oil companies' excess profits that he's shared with the White House. And Wall Street banker and longtime Democratic advisor Robert Wolf was seen leaving the White House today after having publicly advocated to suspend the 18 cent per gallon federal gas tax. All of that could come to a head before the high traffic July 4th holiday and before President Biden travels to the oil rich kingdom of Saudi Arabia. What are your thoughts on that? Should the oil companies pay up? Should they give some of their profits back to the U.S. government? Should they do something else? Uh, so with this article right here, so White House weighs oil profits to tax <laughs> White House weighs oil profits tax to fund consumer rebate. Basically, another word for consumer rebate is a check. You could call it a gas check, stimulus check, inflation check, whatever you want. But basically, I think what's going on here is the White House is going to potentially get the oil profits, you know, this extra 20% or however much, however many billions they made, and potentially it could be passed on to the American people in the form of a gas check, stimulus check. Let me know, is that a good idea uh, to take profit from the oil companies and use that for checks to the American people? Uh, let me know if you think that's a good idea or not. I'm going to give you the Republican perspective of what's going on in inflation with the bill back better and all that. Take a look at this. Republicans like to portray me as some kind of big spender. We have spent a lot of money. Ladies and gentlemen, this year, by the end of the fiscal year, we will have cut the federal deficit by another $1.6 trillion in one year. One year. So when they come to you and talk about big spenders, 
let them know. Almost two trillion dollars in deficit reduction. I don't want to hear any more of these lies about reckless spending. We're changing people's lives. He doesn't want to hear any more lies. That was President Biden claiming his massive government spending plans have actually helped Americans, even as we see record inflation and soaring prices on everything every day. And he continues to mislead the American people about the strength of this economy. Joining me right now is Pennsylvania Senator Pat Toomey. He's a ranking member of the Banking Committee and a member of the Budget and Finance Committees. Senator, it's good to see you this morning. Thanks very much for being here. Good morning, The Maria. president has written op-eds. He's gone on Jimmy Kimmel telling us that we're the fastest growth in the world, which is not true. We are in a contraction. He said that it's not, it's a lie that his spending stoked inflation. What is your reaction? Uh, Maria, it's breathtaking. I mean, he's so detached from reality and being so dishonest to the American people. But he thinks the American people are really stupid. And that's going to catch up to him. Look, we all know what happened. When governments foolishly locked down our economy during the pandemic, we created a hole. The government spent way too much. And long after the crisis was over, in last year, President Biden insisted on another $2 trillion. Every Republican voted no. Democrats made that tremendous, wasteful, massive spending uh, pass. It's done a tremendous amount of damage. And the only reason we're not doing more multi-trillion dollar bills, even now as we speak, is because every Republican opposes President Biden and Joe Manchin and Kirsten Sinema won't go along with him. I mean, for him to claim credit for a reduction in the deficit, the reduction of the deficit is despite Joe Biden, not because of Joe Biden. Yeah, I mean, look, that's what I want to ask about, because how does he get away with all of this, this false uh, reporting, uh, all of these falsities? And right now, isn't it true that your colleagues on the left are still pushing this spending every package, Build Back day. Better, Maria, every day? So what the Chuck day. Schumer wants, the reconciliation package. Trilli and it's trillions. They want trillions more in spending. President Biden is the main driver of this. It is only, it's the fact that every Republican opposes it and Joe Manchin and Kirsten Sinema won't go along is the only reason we haven't been hit with another massive multi-trillion dollar spending bill. And by the way, the, he thinks they're helping people? I, this is how the detachment from reality is just breathtaking. The fact is, uh, wages are evaporating from inflation. People can't afford the, right. the gas, the food, any of these expenses. They're going through the roof. What are your thoughts with that? Do you agree, disagree? Uh, seems Democrats and Republicans just keep getting, getting more and more split apart in terms of their beliefs, or has it always been that way? Uh, I don't know. It seems a little more divisive lately, maybe because of midterm elections. But anyways, that is all the news that I have for you today to hopefully cheer you up a bit. Here's my daughter Bella's tip of the day. Hi, guys. <laughs> Hi guys, this is Belle. This is the tip of the day. I want to tell you one. I want to tell you something. If if you can't find a way to do something, then then do something that you really want to do that you haven't done. Hi guys. Even if you can't make the well, first one happen. Yeah, uh, so that's all I wanted to say. Say bye. Bye. Thank you so much for watching appreciate your time and support yesterday went to the beach with the girls had a great time got maybe too much sun uh and yeah had a good time eating watermelon and stuff on the beach um we just love the beach we we're only like 15 minutes away but hopefully you have a great rest of your day if you want to check out my latest pickleball video you could click up here and i'll see you in the next video take care be safe thank you for watching